Hey everybody, it's Ryan Fontenot here again with the One Million Cents Podcast. I am so excited you've joined us. We have a goal on this podcast and at our ministry, and that is to train one million students around the globe to share the gospel by 2030. So this podcast, whether you're watching it or listening to it, has one simple goal to inspire and encourage and equip pastors, leaders, students, parents to share Jesus in everyday life. And I don't know of a better guy to have a conversation with today than my special guest and my good friend, Dr. Matt Queen. Dr. Queen, how you doing today, brother? I am doing well, brother. It's good to, good to be on this program and just appreciate you and your ministry. Man, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, let's real quick before we get going, would you kind of tell people um, what you're doing right now, who you are, man? Set the table for us because they need to know, man, we don't have just some Joe Schmo on here. This is the man, <laughs> the myth, the legend, Dr. Matt Queen. So tell us what's going on. Where you at, man? Well, yeah, so I, I serve right now as interim provost at Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, I also uh, occupy the world's oldest chair in evangelism. So we didn't start evangelism that Jesus did. God did that. But we've been teaching it longer than any other academic administration or institution. Uh, and it's called the chair of fire, passion, fire. So I'm the ninth occupant of that. And I also serve as professor of evangelism. So I do that. I also am an evangelism consultant uh, with the Southern Baptist Texas Convention. And that's uh, where you and I get to serve together some. Yeah. And then I also am a associate pastor of evangelism for my church, Lane Prairie Baptist Church in Joshua, Texas. Man, I wish you would find something to do, bro. It sounds <laughs> like you've got a lot of time on your plate. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And besides that, he's writing books all the time. He's spitting stuff out. I don't know how he gets done what he gets done. But that does lead us right into our rapid fire questions here to get us started so that Everyone can know a little bit more about you. Dr. Queen, are you a coffee guy or an energy drink guy? I, I'm a tea guy. <laughs> a tea guy. Okay. Yeah. I like that. I like that, man. Well, yeah, well, I, if, I one of those, if I had to pick one of those, I'd be uh, probably probably the energy drink guy okay. more, but I, I like okay. hot tea. A hot tea. All right. Do you have a preferred tea you like? Uh, yes. Uh, I can't remember. It's an Indian tea, and I can't remember the name of it, okay. but I like my lattes. Uh, that's a Oh, tea. yeah. Okay. 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 All right. So speaking of that, you know, you got a lot going on. Are you a morning, midday, or a night guy? I'm a night guy. Night. Okay. Okay, man. I like that. Now, when you travel, drive or fly, what's your preference? I, I prefer to fly. Um, I, you know, I have, I don't, I'm not being diagnosed with ADHD or anything, you know, attention <laughs> deficit disorder, but I feel like I've got it because if I go for a long period of time and I'm just not doing anything, I get real tired yeah. of sleeping. So I there prefer to fly. I like that. Okay. All right. When you are traveling, do you prefer the um, do you prefer the mountains or the beach? What would be your preference? Yeah, I like both of those. Uh, I'm from Asheville. Uh, I say mountains. Uh, I'm from the yeah. Bells, North Carolina, and I miss some okay. down here in Texas. Oh yeah, there are no mountains around where we are, bro. Especially <laughs> Dallas, Fort Worth. So yeah, <laughs> that's right. For sure, for sure. Um, okay. Time of year: winter, spring, summer, fall. Which one you got? Uh, fall in uh, the Appalachians. Uh, if it's in Texas, uh, if it's Texas, I'd probably say uh, summer. But uh, I love being there, seeing those leaves turn. Texas doesn't have much of a fall, so <laughs> no, no, we don't, man. I flew into Chattanooga the other day, man, and the leaves were oh. turning and stuff like that. It was pretty. It's impressive. I must get. I don't know if that's just because I'm getting old or what, but it was impressive. <laughs> all right, so uh, all right, man. When it comes to dessert, are you a pie guy or a cake guy? I would probably say I'm more of a cake guy. Okay. All right. Do you have a Do you have a cake that is? Mm, this is the one. Yeah, I I like just just typical old chocolate cake. Okay. All right, man. Uh, not, not, not nothing fancy. All right. Well, a little more spiritual here now. A little more spiritual. Uh, Old Testament or New Testament? I I'd probably say New Testament. I like it all, but I, I like the New Testament. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think that's what uh, every guy tries to They're like, well, you know, all of it. No, it, okay, I get you. I got it. <laughs> I, so, so if somebody says, uh, like, on both, I'm like, well, which one do you have more sermons out of? That's what I want to know. <laughs> that's, that's the telltale sign. Yeah, that's right. That's right, man. So, so when it comes to the four Gospels of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which would be your go-to? I like Mark a lot. I like Oh, Mark. man. 
you're my guy, man. Mark's like, let's get it done. Let me tell you the story. And this <laughs> happened and this. Yeah, don't 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 confuse me with all the details. I'm, I'm That's like, right. <laughs> That's right, man. And last but most importantly, now now I don't want you to answer this one right now. We're gonna save okay, the answer okay. for the end, okay. all right? But I want you right. to chew on this one. Um, are you a dog guy or a cat guy? This is a big one now, so don't all answer right. it. Um, all right. As a matter of fact, those of you y'all know if you've been listening to us or watching us for a while, I want you to drop in the comments. Do you think Doctor Queen would be a, a cat guy or a dog guy? And you never know. If you get the answer right, we may drop you a free gift from Rage Ministries. So come back at the end. Man, we're going to get that answer. So you kind of shared a little bit while ago, Dr. Queen, about what you do at Southwestern Seminary, um, what you do with the SBTC. Um, so if you will, maybe for a little bit, tell us how in the world does someone get to be the provost at Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary? Man, how did you get to where you are? I know when we're when people watch this or listen, um, there, there's going to be some students who feel called to ministry. And I get asked this a lot, and I'm sure you do. Hey, how do I get to do what you're doing? Um, right. So I just like for people to hear, man, give me a real snapshot version of, man, how did God get you from where you were to where you are today? Yeah, so I, I grew up in the mountains of North Carolina in a Christian home. Um, I, uh, you know, was grew up in church. I got saved at the age of uh, seven years old. And uh, as soon as I said amen from confessing Jesus as Lord, I ran out of the church to tell all the, ch all the kids, other kids, how they could get saved. At the age of eight, <laughs> my dad took me door-to-door -door evangelizing, and I've just never gotten over it. I, I uh, became a, a student minister and, and a music minister, I did my uh, degree uh, in, in religion, uh, then did that at a separate church when I went to seminary. I then became a pastor, then an uh, associate pastor of evangelism. And as I begin to look back and say, what is God calling me to do? Evangelism was always a part of it. I, you know, I was doing evangelism or I'd be given the task in a church to lead in evangelism. And yeah. uh, it, uh, there was an old evangelist. His name was J. Harold Smith. You can kind of look at him. His big famous sermon was God's Final Deadline. And it was on the last yeah. of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. He was at chapel one day in seminary and he preached and he said, if you will commit to share the gospel once a day for the rest of your life, he said, if you're not willing to do that, don't stand up. But I want you to stand up if you're willing to do that. Well, I was pretty much already doing that. So I was getting ready to stand up. And Ryan, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit spoke to me that moment. He said, Matt, if you're going to stand up to what the preacher said, you're also going to surrender to my call to help you equip North America for evangelism. Well, I didn't know what all that meant, but <laughs> I knew that. Yeah. I had a piece in my heart about it, so I stood up, and I knew to do what I needed to do. I needed um, mm. uh, to get a sem to get more seminary, so I finished my master's of divinity and did my PhD in evangelism. And uh, so I did that. I didn't know where it would be. If it'd be a, it, we're, I'm a Southern Baptist, so you know, in a, a state convention, we have uh, state conventions of evangelism. I didn't know if it'd be in that or if it would be in a church or what. And uh, you know, I got in that program. The Lord started giving me opportunities to do some writing and teaching. And uh, mm -hmm. so I got to teach at the college at Southeastern Seminary there in Wake Forest, North Carolina, mm -hmm. taught a lot for Liberty University. And in 2010, I got called down to Southwestern and uh, became a professor. Uh, it wasn't after a semester, I became an associate dean for the Roy Fish School of Evangelism and Missions. And then uh, most recently, uh, our new interim president had, had invited me to come and be the interim provost, which is kind of, it's the chief academic officer of the seminary, uh, the one who kind of shepherds the the, the faculty and does all the yeah. things so it's supposed to have classes and stuff. Wow. Wow. Man, I love that, dude. Seven years old, saved. Eight years old, knocking on doors with your dad. What, what, man, you're a legend, bro. You're more of a legend than I even knew. This is incredible. <laughs> but, but, I, but I love that, right? And we tell people this. One of my, one of my friends has written a book. He says, start where you are. And I think yeah. that's the key for people, right, is if you yeah. feel a call to ministry, man, just start where you are. Don't wait sure. till, oh, one day I will. But start where you are, where God has placed you, and watch God begin to work there. So, man, I I, I love that. Go ahead. I, I would just say this. Um, you're, you're right. I didn't get to where I am because I wanted to grow up to do what I'm doing as an evangelist oh, right. and a provost. It was in that everyday obedience, just taking the next step. So I think you're exactly right. 
Yeah, man. God honors that faithfulness, man. Faithful with little, you'll be entrusted with much. And that's kind of been a recurring theme as I've talked with guys over this podcast about, hey, how'd you get where you are, man? Just be faithful where you are and God will be faithful to take you uh, where he wants you. So, man, you obviously have a passion to tell people about Jesus. Um, and one of the, the goal of this podcast is to help teenagers specifically get equipped to share Jesus with others. So say we've got a teenager listening to this and they're going, wow, um, and he's eight years old, knocking on doors, sharing Christ with others. Um, he, he shares Christ from the platform, but also every day, you know, doc, as Dr. Smith said, you know, hey, will you commit to telling a person every day about Jesus? Um, and, and we have people who have friends and family that they want to tell about Jesus. They know they should tell them about Jesus, but man, they're just kind of maybe just paralyzed and they don't know how to start. Um, as an evangelist, what is one step that you might share with them if somebody's wanting to get serious about sharing their faith with other people? Yeah, I think the big, biggest step is um, um, you have to recognize what an opportunity to share the gospel is. There's a lot of people who, if you were asking them, if you were given the opportunity by God to share the gospel, would you do it? I've asked that question all across the nation, just like you have. People raise their hand and say yes. And then I ask the follow-up question, what is an opportunity to share the gospel? And they think it's some kind of Damascus Road thing that, you know, you're kind of walking down, <laughs> yeah. the light shines yeah. down from there, then somebody's stupefied because the Holy Spirit's convicted them, kind of stumbles yeah. up and says, what must I do to be saved? I mean, God's already done all the work, you know. Well, I'll yeah. take that, you know. But, you know, not that God can't do that. I know places that not in my life, but in others he's done that. But he doesn't usually do that. We've right. got to identify in our lives what is an opportunity to share the gospel. And it, it, it can be many things, but it can be as simple as when you're taking public transportation. Anytime you're in public yeah. transportation, you're going to share the gospel. Uh, two mornings ago, coming back from Corpus Christi, 4.45 in the morning, I was with a, a, a young man named Art. He was my Uber driver. At 4.45 in the morning, I said, hey, Art, have you heard any good news today? He said, no. I said, well, not only do I have some good news, I've got the best news for you. Shared the gospel with him. He and my pastor and another professor, he accepted Christ at the airport. I got him in touch with a pastor that's there in Corpus, who that night got in touch with him, and he's going to be going through the baptism process and folded into the church. So so finding something like that. Or if somebody comes to your house, you know, to to repair something, to sell you something, you know, that's an opportunity God brought them to you. So yeah. trying to find that opportunity for the gospel, I think, is, is the big thing. And then acting on it when you do. Man, that's so good. And I think part of what I picked up there was, too, Matt, is uh, is that, man, you were prepared with a question, an easy question. Hey, have you yeah. heard any good news today? Right. And just see what the Lord does with that. And a lot of yeah. times we just don't know how to start the conversation. And mm -hmm. so because we don't start it, we never have it. And so a uh, funny thing, I was at the meeting at Corpus as well when I landed in Corpus. Um, I had a voice message on my phone, and it was from a lady from JW.org, right? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> she left me a message on my phone. So I was like, man, she was bold enough to call me and leave me a message and call me by name. Man, I called her back from my hotel room, and uh, and she picked up the phone. And, dude, I got to share Christ with her over Christ. the phone, man. It, it was pretty. I was like, man, this is an opportunity. I can go, hey, you know, yeah, you know, glad I missed that call, or I can go, hey. She left me her number. I'm going to call this lady back, and we're going to have a conversation. So that's exactly those opportunities. Right. Yeah, man, that's just right. opportunities we have there. So, so um, what, what along that line? Let, let's go with this for a minute. What are some of your go-to conversation starters? Like you just had in the car there. Hey, have you heard any good news today? Do you have any other good um, openers or, or conversation starters that you found that are helpful? Yeah. So, so that that one is one, and I got it from a. A guy up in Kentucky, that's where I got that one, so I wish I had that one. Another one that's really influenced me is um, um, there, there, was a, there was a writer um, and a Baptist theologian. His name was Carl F.H. Henry, and he went to Africa one time, and uh, a missionary told me about this encounter that he had, and he asked this lady, he said, uh, my dear, has anyone ha taken the opportunity in your lifetime to tell you about God's love for you? And so I took that, and I kind of made it my own. And so another one that I use a lot is to say, hey, is, has uh, anybody taken the time today to tell you that God loves you? And Ryan, I'll tell you, 95% of people say no. And then I just say, well, I want to be the first one to tell you God loves you. And you don't know me. I don't know you. 
but here's how I know God loves you. And then I'll just tell them about Jesus dying, you know. There you go. So I would say those are my two go tos. And and yeah. and brother, let me tell you, it's not magic. But when I said those, there's never been a time that I've not asked those questions and be able to go all the way through and then at the end call for a response. Now, not everybody's gotten saved from those, but right, I've never right. been prevented from going from A to Z with the gospel. And I believe that's because people are a lot more willing to hear the gospel today than we are to share it. Say that right there, man. Listen, if you guys did not just hear what he just said, you need to write that down. You need to record this, whatever. He said that people are a lot more willing to hear the gospel today than we are to share it. And that, that no wonder Jesus said the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few, right? Amen. It's biblical. Yeah, man, that's, that's good, bro. That's so good. So, um, so, so let me ask you this. What, you know, I, I believe, I believe every Christian knows they ought to share the gospel, believes they should share the gospel, even wants to share the gospel, but many don't. And I know you've trained thousands of people. What is maybe a common fear or common reason people give as to why they they don't share the gospel or haven't shared the gospel? Is, is there one that kind of stands out to you? Yeah, there's actually two. Can I tell them real quick? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I think there's the fear of failure, and then there's the okay. fear of rejection. Okay. And so uh, fear of failure, there's people that say, you know, well, I've never been trained in evangelism, or... You know, I, I can't memorize things because a lot of times, a lot of evangelism trains we've done is we've, mm-hmm. we've, we we didn't mean to do this. We were trying to help to give a, a structure for somebody to share the gospel. But yeah. we have un- we have conditioned people to think that the gospel is something you memorize that somebody else wrote. And the gospel is not what somebody else wrote. Mm. It's what God gave in the scriptures. Jesus died. He was buried. He was raised. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of people think it's failure. You know, if, 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 uh, if if I don't know what to say, I'll I'm already a failure at the beginning. And yeah, so they, they yeah. self defeat. And and I just for for those people, I, I just like to say this: What was the evangelism training of the first century? They didn't have steps of peace with God, four spiritual laws, mm-hmm. three circles. Those yeah. things are great, but you know what they had? They had someone who told them the gospel. And that's what Paul says in First Corinthians fifteen three four. For I delivered to you, I told you with the urgency mm-hmm. of first point what someone else told me. That's so right. for the fear of, of failure, I like to tell people, if you know enough of the gospel to be saved by it, then you know enough of the gospel to share it. And yeah, bro, get, good. get the training, get as much as many tools as you can. But right. if you know what saves you, that's what can save somebody else. Yeah, the second one is a good. fear of, of, of rejection. And, um, you know, people, they're afraid, well, what if I share the gospel and somebody says no? Well, guess what? They will. <laughs> and you will have more yeah. people say no than yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But here's the thing with the fear of rejection. Um, some people say, well, what if I make them more lost by sharing the gospel? You know, it push them further away. They're already away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. They're already yeah. lost. Exactly. More lost. Yeah. And then the second yeah. thing is, as we look at the scriptures, Paul the Apostle, the greatest missionary evangelist in the history of the world, he was rejected. I mean, look at when he was in Antioch and Pisidia. Yeah. Look at when he was in Corinth. He got so rejected and scared in Corinth that Jesus himself had to come by night in a vision to tell him to keep on going. Uh, oh, so he man, was rejected. Yeah. Jesus was rejected. The Son of God, yeah. God in the flesh. You ever heard of Pharisees, Sadducees, teachers of the law, Judas Iscariot? You know, so, so the thing with rejection is all of us are going to be rejected. So it's just a reality. Yeah. Uh, there is no failure in evangelism as long as we share the gospel. The only failure in evangelism is a failure to evangelize. So I think those are the two that I see the most. I, I don't know seeing something yeah. different. No, man, I think those are right up there, man. Exactly what I would see, you know, this fear of rejection, fear of failure. And I think both, you know, it's important for people to know, number one, hey, you you do. You only fail when we fail to tell, right? So, man, yes. you know, you're not... We're, we're not called to save anybody. We're called to sow seed. And so we're going to sow the seed of the gospel. And in the fear of rejection, Jesus said, you're going to be rejected. Jesus says, hey, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. It's going to happen. And But ultimately, they're not rejecting you. It's a rejection of Christ. Hey, bottom line is, if they reject you, but later on, they receive Christ, you won, man. This this is, that's it. That's the goal. So, man, thank you for those. And and for anybody that, you know, just is is fearful out there right now, or maybe not knowing what to say, 
I want to remind you that we have uh, a, a way to share the gospel. It's not the way, but it's a way that we help people share the gospel. You can go to one million cents.com and um, get free training there. We have trainings for individuals. If you're a leader, a student pastor, a parent, you want to train a group, um, we have group training on there. It's all absolutely free. One million cent.com. Go check it out. Um, because listen, uh, the tool is not the answer, but a tool can be beneficial, right? And so we want to be able to provide you with simple tools like that. We also have links to other tools as well that um, that God has used and is using to help equip others to share the gospel. And Dr. Queen, as um, as I know you've had, probably you probably have thousands of stories of people, um, but, but I want to ask, man, maybe one of the things we like to do is just we want this to inspire people. And I think stories uh, inspire people. And I just want you to share real quick. Is there a story that kind of stands out to you of maybe when a teenager got it? You know, they realize, man, I know I need to tell my friends about Jesus. Maybe you were helping equip them and man, they did it. And and, and this happened or an adult. Um, we share with us maybe a story that you think could be inspiring or encouraging to one of our listeners today. Absolutely. And and for the sake of, of being, um, you know, wh whatever it can do, it was with my daughter. Uh, mm -hmm. Her name is Madison. And, uh, you know, with my, my kids, both my daughters, uh, we took them out to do evangelism with us even before they were saved. Now, not mm -hmm. for them to do evangelism, but number one, we wanted to see that we wanted our daughters to see mom and dad doing it. So they knew it was important. Yeah. And second of all, we wanted them to hear the gospel over and over and over so that they could respond to the gospel. Mm -hmm. And then we wanted to also them to hear it that way so they knew to share it. So my daughter, my oldest daughter, Madison, she's a senior in high school. Um, I, I'll never forget whenever I was overseas, uh, I, I believe that I was in uh, Singapore on, on a trip. And uh, my daughter, Madison, who had who had shared her faith some, she'd gone doing some door to door, but she'd not done it a whole lot in other places. But there was a neighbor across the street that she'd been burdened for. She'd been trying to share the gospel, you know, with, a little timid about it. But uh, anyway, this, this uh, neighbor of ours, was able to come to church with us and at the church my daughter and the youth pastor shared the gospel and i still have the text message ryan i've got it screenshotted when she wrote to me she said i'm on the other side of the world i got chill bumps thinking about it and she said dad so and so was able to come to church tonight and i was able to fully share the gospel and she got saved and as the oh. proudest moment in my life uh, and my other daughter she does it too but that's just the one that sticks out. I've got that screenshot that I look at in my uh, gallery a lot of times, just to just let me say that you know that that that, that you do you, that that's a win, you know. Oh man, no doubt, no doubt. And that reminds me of the saying I know you've heard. I don't know where it originated from or whatever. That evangelism is more caught than it is taught, right? Yes. And um, yes. man, have it having your your family with you, seeing that, watching that. Which uh, man, this 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 spring, well, now at the time of this launch, uh, my daughter is actually going to be traveling with me, and uh, man, and I'm excited about that for her just to see what we get to do and um, be part of. And so, anyway, man, uh, dude, thank you so much for your time today. Um, I know you are a very busy man, as um, man, God has given you so many opportunities. So thank you for taking time to join me today. If people want to reach out to you, connect with you. Um, how, how can they do that? What's the best way? Yeah, so on, the, on all the socials, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, I am DR for Dr. D-R-M-A-T-T-Q-U-E-E-N. So I'd love to connect with you that way. You can also uh, email me at M for Matt, M Queen, Q-U-E-E-N, at S-W-B as in boy, T-S dot E-D-U. And would love to get in touch with anybody that has questions about evangelism. Yeah, I love that. We'll drop all that information in the show notes too, wherever you're listening or watching this. So make sure you connect with Dr. Queen. He is a resource that I promise you, you need to take advantage of. He, If he can't help you, he can point you to someone who can. So Dr. Queen, thanks for being here. But before we jump off, man, let's circle all the way back around to that question that everybody's been dying to know. Is Dr. Queen a cat guy or a dog guy? Let the world know right now. Well, you know, there's only one man's best friend, and that would be a dog. There you go. There you go. My man. I knew that beard kind of told. I t I'm, I'm convinced that dudes with beards are dog people, you know? <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. 
Well, everybody, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. As always, I want to encourage you to drop by the site 1millioncent.com. Check it out for training on how you can begin to share your faith and equip others to do the same. If we can help you in any way, connect with us. Let us know how we can help you move that needle of evangelism in your life, in your church, in your family. I believe that the best way to reach the world for Jesus is for us to equip people to tell the world about Jesus. So don't forget this as we close. I say it every time, but today is a great day to tell someone about Jesus. Let's go.